So one of the observations as one little ant slash human that I am of disappointment is the political division over information that has been observed, that I observed this year, that it seemed uh, the discussion was less about uh, sort of uh, what happened and understanding what happened deeply and more about there's different truths out there and it's like an argument my truth is better than your truth and it's it's like red versus blue or different like it, it was like this ridiculous discourse that doesn't seem to get at any kind of notion of the truth it's not like a, some kind of scientific process even science got politicized in yeah. ways that's very yeah. heartbreaking to me uh you have an exciting project on the ai front uh of trying to rethink one of the, you mentioned corporations. There's one of the other collective intelligence systems that have emerged through all of this is social networks and just the spread, the internet is, is the spread of information on the, uh, the internet, our ability to share that information. There's all different kinds of news sources and so on. And so you said like, that's from first principles, let's rethink how we think about the news, how we think about information. Can you talk about this? Uh, amazing effort that you're undertaking? Oh, I'd love to. This has been my big COVID project. I <laughs> spent nights and weekends on ever since the lockdown. To segue into this, actually, let me come back to what you said earlier, that you had this hope that in your experience, people who were, you felt were very talented were often idealistic and wanted to do good. Frankly, I, I feel the same about all people, by and large. There are always exceptions, but I think the vast majority of everybody, regardless of education and whatnot, really are fundamentally good, right? So how can it be that people still do so much nasty stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I think it has everything to do with this, with the information that we're given. Yes. You know, if you go into Sweden 500 years ago and you start telling all the farmers that those Danes in Denmark, they're so terrible people, you know, and we have to invade them. Yes because they've done all these terrible things that you can't fact check yourself. A lot of people, Swedes did that, right? And it, and um, we've seen, we're seeing so much of this today in the world, both geopolitically, you know, where we are told that, that China is bad and Russia is bad and Venezuela is bad and people in those countries are often told that we are bad. And we also see it at a, a micro level, you know, where people are told that, oh, those who voted for the other party are bad people. It's not just an intellectual disagreement, but they're bad people. And um, we're getting ever more divided. And so how do you reconcile this with with this intrinsic goodness I, in people? I, I, I think it's pretty obvious that it has, again, to do with this, with the information that we're fed and given, right? We evolved to live in small groups where you might know 30 people in total, right? So you then had a system that was quite good hmm. for assessing who you could trust and who you could not. And if someone told you that, you know, Joe there is a jerk, but you had interacted with him yourself and seen him in action, and, and you would quickly realize maybe that that's actually not quite accurate, right? Hmm. Uh, but now that we, the most people on the planet are people we've never met, it's very important that we have a way of trusting information we're given and so okay so where does the news project come in well throughout history you can go read machiavelli you know from the 1400s and you'll see how already then they were busy manipulating people with propaganda and stuff propaganda is not new at all <laughs> and the incentives to manipulate people is just not new at all what is it that's new what's new is machine learning meets propaganda that's what's new. That's why this has gotten so much worse. You know, some people like to blame certain individuals, like in my liberal university bubble, many people blame Donald Trump and say it was his fault. I see it differently. I think it, what ha Donald Trump just had this extreme skill at playing this game in the machine learning algorithm age, a game he couldn't have played you know, 10 years ago. So what's changed? What's changed is, well, Facebook and Google and other companies, and I, I don't want, I'm not bad-mouthing them. I have a lot of friends who work for these companies, the good people. They deployed machine learning algorithms just to increase their profit a little bit to just maximize the time people spent watching ads. 
and they had totally underestimated how effective they were going to be. This was, again, the black box, non-intelligible intelligence. Mm -hmm. They just noticed, oh, we're getting more ad revenue, great. It took a long time until they even realized why and how and how damaging this was for society. Because, of course, what the machine learning figured out was that the by far most effective way of gluing you to your little rectangle was to show you things that triggered strong emotions, mm -hmm. anger, etc., resentment. And uh, if it was true or not, it didn't really matter. It was also easier to find stories that weren't true. If you weren't limited, that's just a limitation right. that's, to show people. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very limiting factor. And yes. before long, we got these amazing filter bubbles on a scale we had never seen before. Yeah. Couple this to the fact that also the online news media were so effective that they killed a lot of print journalism. There is on, there's on less than half as many journalists now in America, I believe, as there was you know, a generation ago. You just couldn't compete with the online advertising. So all of a sudden, most people are not getting the, even reading newspapers. They get, get their news from social media. And most people only get news <laughs> in their little bubble. So along comes now some people like Donald Trump who, who figured out, to, among the first successful politicians to figure out how to really play this new game and become very, very influential. But I think that was, Donald Trump was a simp. Well, he, he, he took advantage of it. He didn't create, the, the fundamental conditions were created by machine learning sort of taking over the news media. So this is what motivated my little COVID project here. So, you know, I said before, machine learning and tech in general is not evil, but it's also not good. It's just a tool mm -hmm. that you can use for good things or bad things. And as it happens, machine learning and news was mainly used by the big players, big tech, to manipulate people into watch as many ads as possible which had this unintended consequence of really screwing up our democracy into f and fragmenting it into filter bubbles. So I thought, well, machine learning algorithms are basically free. They can run on your smartphone for free also if someone gives them away to you, right? There's no reason why they only have to help the big guy mm -hmm. to manipulate the little guy. They can just as well help the little guy to mm -hmm. see through all the manipulation attempts from the big guy. So did this project it's called you can go to improve the news.org the first thing we've built is the little just a little news aggregator looks a bit like google news except it has these sliders on it to help you break out of your filter bubble so if you're, you're reading you can click click and go to your favorite topic and then uh, if you just slide the left right slider away all the way over to the left there's two sliders right yeah Mm -hmm. There's the one, the op most obvious one is the one that has left, right labeled on it. <laughs> you go to the left, you get one set of articles, you go to the right, you see a very different truth yeah. appearing. Oh, that's literally left and right on the political a, spectrum. On the political yeah, spectrum. Yeah, so if you're reading about immigration, for example, it it's very, very noticeable. And, and I think step one, always, if you want to not get manipulated, is just to be able to recognize the techniques people use. So it's very helpful to just see how they spin things on the two mm -hmm. sides. Uh, I think uh, many people are under the misconception that the main problem is fake news. Mm -hmm. It's not. Uh, we I had an amazing team of MIT students where we did an academic project to use machine learning to detect the main kinds of bias over the summer. And yes, of course, sometimes there's fake news where someone just claims something that's false, mm -hmm. right? Like, oh, Hillary Clinton just got divorced or something. Yes. But what we see much more of is actually just omissions. If you go to, uh, there's some stories which just won't be mentioned by the left or the right because mm -hmm. it doesn't suit their agenda. And then they'll instead mention other ones very, very, very much. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we've we've had a, lot, a number of stories about the Trump family's financial dealings. Mm -hmm. And then there's been a, some a bunch of stories about the Biden families, Hunter Biden's financial dealings, right? Mm -hmm. Surprise, surprise, they don't get equal coverage on the left and the right. Right. <laughs> one side yeah. loves to cover the Biden, Hunter Biden's stuff, and one side loves to cover the Trump. You can yeah. never guess which is which, right? <laughs> These, yeah. But the great news is if you want to, if you're a normal American citizen and you dislike corruption in all its forms, then slide, slide, you can just get look at both of the yep. sides and you, you'll see all the corrupt 
those political corruption stories. 